2022 Toyota Tundra TRD 210. Uh, 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Crew Cab Long Bed Limited. Ben bought a new truck in 2022. And the first thought I had was, he's crazy. But then the more I thought about it, Ben's single. He has a great career. He owns his own house. You know what? He deserves that new truck feeling. Toyota Tundra TRD. Because you deserve it. You have the means to own the best. You have that silent superiority. Two turbos. One for each bank of cylinders and two intercoolers. 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. But there's no V8. My name is still Barry Hoster. Where's my V8? Barry, this twin turbo V6 makes more power I'll than. I'll only buy a full size truck if it has a V8. <laughs> Barry, just go to an urgent care. No! Urgent cares are part of the deep state. They just pump your stomach and give you strychnine. Barry, they pumped your stomach last time because you drank one liter of Bisquick instant pancake mix. If Toyota doesn't bring back a V8, my father will come back to life and die again. He devoted his whole life to the United States of America. What did he do? Wait, young men in their underwear at Mips Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. What an operator. 1976 to 2016. What a legacy. I'm a man without conviction. I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. Toyota anticipated V8 pushback. So, like the GR86, Toyota piped in fake engine sounds into the cabin. But, unlike that sports car, Toyota makes advanced sound simulation marketing slow stroke it's okay boomer your legacy is secure and the world will continue just like it was and your grandkids will say nice things about you and your epitaph will read here lies herbal gerbil he was always right v8 noises toyota plays bassy v8 noises through the speakers into the cab under moderate to hard acceleration I think it's a parameter of the electronic throttle or something. Oh, we gotta pump in V8 noises to drown out what little noises the two super efficient turbos make. I want to hear the turbos. Because the Tundra is fast. Not just fast for a truck, but fast. All right, so turbo boost. It just gets a second wind, and then gets another second wind, and that's fast enough. Yeah. And it does it. Is it piping in fake engines? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's that rumble. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's why it sounds like a V8. Yeah. And once someone comes up with a Cobb tune, or if TRD low-key releases a boost control and fueling update, 500 pound-feet of torque is possible. Now... A lot of that torque comes from Toyota's AWR10 L65 ECTI direct shift 10 speed transmission. Close ratio AF. Keep that V35. I'm not a 3.4 liter. I'm a 3.5. See my designation. I'm a three and a half liters. Just watch. I'm not a 3.4. Okay, fine. I'm a 3.4. V6. In the pa 10 close gears are necessary to keep the turbos in boost and offer generous highway gearing, which will get you 24 miles per gallon on the highway. A long way from the Gen 1 Tundra's V8 mileage of 14, maybe, with a four-speed. What I love so far, um, you have less visibility out of this than you would in an older Toyota. 
Uh, you just see the hood line there and what you have for the windshield. It's certainly a much more limited profile, partially just aerodynamics trying to help with MPG. Um, but in exchange, you get a whole lot of cameras. You've got this rear view mirror itself is actually not a regular rear view mirror. You can tell it's a, it's a screen. You can flip it back to regular if you want it, but you can also just have it like this and it'll show you from one of the, I think, eight cameras. I haven't counted, but somewhere in that range. Um, overhead view, if you put it in reverse here, you can see you've got your direct backup and then you've got this amazing around view camera so you can change it, you can set it. You can actually turn this auto function on so whenever you're at low speeds it'll turn your camera on for you. Um, all sorts of different stuff I'm sure every YouTuber in the world has covered but tons of great features on it. Heated and cooled seats. Um, I would say the ride is significantly smoother. It's about as smooth as my 200 series Land Cruiser was. This is an entirely new platform. It's based on the TNGA F platform now, so a whole lot smoother, right? Independent rear suspension, um, night and day different. Um, I love the, the just kind of overall smoothness to it and the responsiveness. This transmission is fantastic. It's now a 10-speed automatic. Um, I mean, it, it, between that and the, the twin turbos, it gets out of its own way, but it's always a smooth ride. Um, I mean, and in here, it's incredibly comfortable. This is the limited model, so it's still, at this point now, above this is the Platinum, the 1794, the TRD Pro, the Capstone are all more expensive trucks. But if you look around this interior, you've got heated and cooled seats. You've got plenty of space for rear legroom. You've got a panoramic moonroof with a shade. You've got pretty much every feature you could want. Um, and a lot of just little toys like I didn't even notice at first there's a little cigarette lighter port up here perfect for your radar detector and uh, just a lot of little stuff and one of them relative to the GM owners out there they kept your sunglass holder mm -hmm. all of the new GM trucks no longer have a sunglass holder which drives me crazy so um, you know a lot of the complaints that I've heard I haven't had any wastegate issues I haven't had any of the wind noise issues people are talking about a whole lot of other stuff that people have complained about I don't have to enter my pen every time on this screen you can see as soon as I turn it on here it's going to turn on it's going to come right back to my profile it's going to enable CarPlay everything that I wanted it to do it'll do just like it should um, you know I, I love the the design and the setup this is a giant vehicle and it feels like it but it doesn't feel overly huge like it's cumbersome to navigate um, you know you can see here you can come into any of these modes you can come back to your home screen and you can navigate through any of your features and options this screen is huge it's a 14.1 inch screen but it doesn't feel uh, obsessively huge I do agree with some components that I think Toyota could do a little bit more as far as how they kind of set it up and what they do to integrate it but overall I would say it's easy to use and and all of these options when you're scrolling through it's as intuitive as an iPad. It's very, very smooth. It's very easy to use. I would certainly buy one again. I, they are dear. They are not an, a, a cheap product, but uh, it, it, it does exactly what I was looking for. Trucks from foreign automakers rest on the inseam of American otherness. Close enough to smell the ball sweat of a self-satisfied truck owner, but not close enough to be drenched by it. And from that proximity to the American experience, a foreign automaker begins building their version. This Toyota Tundra is the only full-size pickup truck without a V8. But besides Barry Hofstetter, who actually cares? Well, the people who can't wrap their heads around a V6 pickup probably dump their high school girlfriends because their football coach told them to. Trust me, this truck can do all the same things your beloved daddy Ram can do, but within the trappings of glorious modernity and its endlessly fetishized style. Because the future is pregnant with possibility, and it's time to have the baby shower. You probably wouldn't think a 14-inch multimedia touchscreen would amount to much, but it's much larger than it looks. And it's a fairly clean and uncomplicated layout, which is really saying a lot when you consider how clunky and overproduced touchscreen systems can be. The screen is also synced to cameras around the Tundra, so you can choose whichever view you need in a given moment, such as with the multi-terrain monitor that prevents you getting surprised by obstacles on tough terrain. There's also the improved Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, which gets you pre-collision, intersection support, emergency braking, and steering assist, automatic high beams, lane tracing, dynamic radar cruise control, road sign assist, and curve speed management to automatically sense curves and adjust speed as the truck turns. Are you going to use all these things? Probably not. Do you need all of these things? Also, no. It's better to have these options and not need them than to drive a truck with the dependability of a stoner borrowing his girlfriend's Ultima to go to a job interview. 
you know he's bringing that thing back smelling like cheese fries and unemployment. Toyota Tundra. Get that new truck feeling and bust up on the ceiling. Toyota Tundra. Roses are red, violets are blue. I think of the Tundra when I'm sleeping with you. The 2022 Tundra shares the new global architecture GAF platform with the International Land Cruiser and the new Lexus LX. It's a platform meant to simplify the Toyota product line by limiting the number of platform variants to the point where Toyota went from over 100 different platform variants to having roughly half the fleet propped up by just five TNGA platforms. Not only does this allow for more component sharing than previous platforms, it also costs 20% less to produce, while improving performance in the form of stiffer chassis for better handling and lower hood cowls for improved forward visibility. But this hood cowl doesn't have to be this high because it's a V6. You don't need all this. You don't need a Bruce Campbell chin. All trucks have to be uh, now. Look at the first gen. Freaking V8 in there, and it has a respectable hood. You can see over it. Anyway. The reduced cost allows Toyota to redirect those funds toward other aspects of the design that need addressing, like having more stuff with the big hoods, like adding coil spring rear suspension rather than leaf springs of the previous model and stretching the bed to six and a half feet. Are we getting an eight foot bed? I don't know. The American truck has long been the presumed domain of a particular sort of person. The man whose preferred theater of combat is the Costco parking lot, and who dreams of attaining that long-desired status that has eluded men of his stature. Oppression. Help! People are making fun of my truck nuts and loser flag window decal! You'd care a whole lot less about what others think of your truck if you realize they don't think about your truck. At all. Just sit there. Eat your lawn of dunes and keep complaining about Dollar Tree raising their prices by a quarter. But here's the thing. They were the presumed domain. Presumed. This may have been true 20 years ago, but a report late last year showed that millennials have finally surpassed boomers and Gen Xers as the top segment of truck buyers. Over time, trucks have become more of a leisure vehicle than something smaller and more extravagant. Because Trucks like these have grown more focused on ride quality and handling to the point where you don't really feel like you're missing out. They do everything a comfortable sedan will do. They do everything a people hauler will do. They really do everything a minivan will do. And they offer utility in a way a smaller, faster, and more tech-forward sedan can't. Pickup trucks are more accessible than they've ever been because their normalization has diluted some of the negative stigma associated with driving one. More truck drivers on the road means fewer people assuming selfish intentions every time they see you passing them. Fewer people assuming you're compensating or that you have issues with authority, both negative and fetishistic. When Shakespeare said, now is the winner of our discontent, people think he meant that we're in the thick of hard times. But what he actually meant was that the hard times are nearly over. That's essentially what's happening with trucks. In a way, we're in the new golden age of the pickup truck because they're becoming more versatile over time, more popular, more acceptable to use one of these as your only vehicle for cruising on sun-kissed country roads or under skies clotted with rain clouds.